This is the story of an idea foreign rival and for the first time would give private motoring and a fuller life to ordinary people everywhere. An idea on the grand scale, which in the fullness of time brought together Britain's two major car producers to become the biggest single motor manufacturer in all Europe and the fourth biggest in the world, the British Motor Corporation. Now nearly half the open Austin 7, the baby Austin of the 20s. Its equally famous contemporary, the bull-nosed Morris. The larger Austin Tourer. The Austin 7 was more popular than ever as the 30s opened. The 1931 Morris 10, the family saloon beginning to come into its own. One of the most familiar post-war outlines the sturdy Morris Minor, and later, the two fine small car traditions merging in the brilliant Mini range. BMC is not just Austin and Morris, though the great plants at Longbridge and Cowley are the heart of the organization. BMC is also some 20 subsidiary companies in Britain alone, and its countrywide operations and constant demand for supplies make work for other people in other firms and in the public services. The aims of the amalgamation have never changed. Shared research, development and design, bulk buying of materials to reduce cost, joint capital, a more comprehensive range of models, a common system of spares and service. The long journey that takes BMC cars to the ends of the earth begins in the heart of the English Midlands, in Oxford and Abingdon, in Birmingham and Castle Bromwich. Oxford may seem to defy the changes of the restless world, but that is deceptive, for here, scholarship and industry are good neighbors, contributing to each other's development. From the university come the eager young minds and the achievements of research. And from industry, not merely the openings for those minds and the stimulus for that research, but direct and concrete help too, as the name of Nuffield College proves. Ideas build universities, which in turn give birth to new ideas. But just as surely, ideas build factories, and the factories, day by day, produce new methods, new answers to problems, new problems for answering. Every machine is the child of a dream. If a handful of men had not dreamed and striven half a century ago, the huge BMC plants at Longbridge, Cowley, and elsewhere would not be here today, turning out 18,000 vehicles a week. BMC spends two million pounds every week on raw materials, as much as the entire shopping population of a major city. No time to list them all, because a modern motor car has nearly 19,000 separate parts, and that means a great many different raw materials. But to take one aspect alone, carpeting and upholstery. BMC's weekly shopping list includes 15,000 yards of carpet, a similar quantity of underfelt nearly 26 miles of leather cloth and similar materials, and 2,550 hides of real leather. The beauty of BMC bodies is a lot more than skin deep. Paint is only part of it. Before the paint, even before the primer, each body goes through the highly mechanized rotor dip plant, which proofs it against rust and corrosion and lays the foundation for a body finish that will last for years, withstanding all extremes of temperature, sunlight, or humidity.
When the body has received its rust-proofing coat, it is transferred from the rotor dip to the priming and painting line. One of the BMC paint shops, including the rotor dip, covers seven acres and is one of the most efficient installations of its kind in the world. There is air conditioning and other protection for the men who apply the few manual touches that are needed. Otherwise, the process is almost entirely automatic and any one of 26 colors can be piped to the self-operating booths. 3,000 gallons of paint a week are used to provide the smoothest, toughest exterior finish yet devised for quality flow line production. BMC doesn't only buy materials. It also buys, to the tune of 200 million pounds a year, components and accessories from 4,000 firms that specialize in them so that the combination of their skill and BMC's exacting specifications produces just what is wanted. Every vehicle that leaves a BMC factory has given more work to people in industries outside. Ten and a half million gallons of oil are burned in the BMC furnaces every year and a quarter of a million tons of coal, a full year's work for about 1,400 miners. But BMC's own power is only part of it. Most of the total of 162.5 million kilowatt hours per quarter comes from the Central Electricity Authority. More work for more people. But back to the men and women who work in the BMC factories themselves. There are some 82,000 of them, brains and hands second to none in the motor manufacturing world, drawing 50 million pounds in wages and salaries every year and producing 17 times as many vehicles per man as their grandfathers did 50 years ago. Longbridge, Birmingham is the huge Austin plant in the BMC complex and also headquarters of the whole corporation. From here, as from Cowley and from the sports car works at Abingdon, thousands of vehicles a week start their journey to every corner of Britain and to the markets of the world. The great multi-storey garage holds over 3,000 cars waiting to go overseas, about two days output. Every year, something like 150 million pounds worth of BMC vehicles and spare parts leave the shores of Great Britain for over 170 different countries. More than 1 36th of Britain's total exports of all kinds of goods and materials. BMC is, in fact, Britain's biggest single exporter. The lifelines of BMC abroad are long and powerful. They stretch to Australia, to Europe, to Africa, to North and South America, to India and Southeast Asia. We've been talking of vehicles, but vehicles doesn't only mean cars. BMC's tractor range bears the Nuffield mark and Nuffield tractors are an important part of BMC's impressive export totals. The tremendous success of BMC commercial vehicles, ranging from the nippiest little utility to the giant lorry, is a story on its own. All the same, it is an integral part of the BMC picture, including, of course, the export picture. Bathgate in Scotland is a major BMC commercial vehicles plant from which trucks and lorries of every kind leave for the continents of the world. To deliver the goods, BMC uses ships and harbors on a scale that makes a vital contribution to their prosperity. The ports of the west of England and South Wales in particular have been helped to recover from the loss of their traditional coal export trade by the ever-increasing flow of motor exports from the BMC factories. Sales to North America alone have reached the 100,000 level.
especially popular in the dollar market are the high-performance cars like the MGs and the Austin Healy's. When these BMC sports cars set up 21 new international class records on Bonville salt flats, demand rocketed so that all but 4,000 of that year's MG and Sprite output went abroad. But just getting the cars to hundreds of overseas distributors is not enough. However good a car may be, no one's going to buy it unless he knows he can get the spares to keep it running. If it's a BMC car, he can, thanks to BMC Service Limited. This organization is one of the biggest of its kind in Britain, and it provides a huge reserve of spares from which the BMC owner can be given just what he needs, whatever his model and wherever it is. Each week, 1,500 tons of spares are shipped overseas. Every morning of the year, a van leaves Cowley for London Airport to guarantee delivery of spares within 48 hours to the BMC owner in any part of the world. In Britain, it's been a tradition to buy cars that last a long time. Austin and Morris have helped to make this possible by offering spares for at least the first 10 years of their car's life, and often for as long as 30 years after their manufacture. It is in the same spirit of long-term trust and dependability that BMC today keep their cars running all over the world, thanks to the morning spares airlift from London Airport. An expanding network of exports and of service after sales that reaches into every continent in the world. A network with its heart and centre in the English Midlands. The same countryside in which, half a century ago, the original Morris and Austin cars made their first appearance. Cars like this 1913 bull-nosed Morris, which was a decade ahead of its time. The twenties gave birth to whose names have become history, such as the Austin 7. Cars like these set the motoring public new standards in reliability and established the legacy of sound workmanship which BMC inherits. By the summer of 1939, Austin and Morris had each produced a million cars, and today's BMC mass production, which soon after the merger reached a scale unequaled in Europe, is securely founded on the achievements of those two pre-war giants. 
without such mass production, it is doubtful if sufficient labor could have been found to create the mass of new cars demanded by the post-war buying public. In the BMC shops, the machines of mass production were set to work to meet that demand. The tools for the job were often made by BMC engineers themselves, planning years ahead of the traditional machine tool manufacturers. This enterprise has paid off in the engine shops of BMC, which represent a production engineer's paradise. The whole scene has been transformed by automatic machinery, which does the work of a hundred men, setting them free for other work. And combined with the automatic machinery, skilled human checking, inspection and control. The tireless mechanism and the experienced eye that can tell if the mechanism is doing its job. Automatic machinery. Two words for a system which has kept car prices down in a time of inflation. Automatic machinery allied to BMC's common system of design and components, the sharing of engines and suspension assemblies, all giving better value for money to those who drive under the BMC banner. But in the end, BMC is more than an industrial machine. Essentially, it is a fellowship of ordinary men and women, shareholders owning the business or workers in the factories. Thousands of small investors, housewives, farmers, civil servants, have put their savings into BMC. And 82,000 people are at work on the assembly lines and in the offices of BMC each day. They're doing much more than make motor cars. BMC is Britain's biggest individual exporter, and those who work for it are the best guarantee of Britain's ability as an island economy to pay for essential imports. Recognition of BMC's national role has come from the government's efforts to direct the expansion of its factories to places where more jobs are needed. This is not the first time that the companies in the group have helped the economy in this way. So too, in the years ahead, with many changes imminent in the picture of trade as the car becomes increasingly a symbol of personal independence, BMC is seeking to consolidate its position abroad. Already, Powerful and efficient firms in Italy and the Argentine have become linked with BMC's manufacturing system. This, then, is the picture of the British Motor Corporation, today and tomorrow. It is the biggest motor manufacturing concern in Europe. Nearly half the cars on the roads of Britain are made in the factories of BMC. BMC means huge, coordinated resources. To feed its assembly lines, dozens of other factories and thousands of other workers are kept busy. BMC means prosperity for industry. Annual overseas orders for BMC cars have reached the 150 million sterling mark. BMC means trade for Britain. Every week, 82,000 men and women earn a million pounds at BMC. For them, BMC means security. And every hour of the working day, nearly 200 new BMC vehicles are produced for the roads of Britain, and for the markets of the world.